This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Time to Geeky Get Awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 429 here, live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh in the Beachview neighborhood. And we got a heck of a crew with us. First of all, he is now tied John, uh, Ron Krause for uh, times on the show this year. John Chichilla is with us from Studio C. How's it going tonight? Hey, he's the. He's the uh, 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 he he he's he's the, I'm the gadget guy. You're, you're the gadget guy. You haven't been on long enough for uh, for this year for me to remember what you do. <laughs> yeah, who are you're the gadget you? guy, a big bank international esquire, uh, ready to, to hang out with us. Um, also, take, take a little hiatus, and you're all all blown apart. Yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> also with us back in the studio, first time this year, the Dutters. Hi, Katie Dudas with us. Hi, sales and marketing director over at the uh, Scare House. Yep, I do stuff. Did I remember all the things? director of sales and marketing i think you did damn it so close right words wrong order yep one day there it is it's been a month it's, it's been fine. a month I understand. that's fine uh back with us and also back in the studio it's been a while yeah this first time this year first time this Yay! year also first time this year john carmen's with us what, what do i do yeah what do you what do you do what, what, do, you, what do, you, do you do i would like to be a bartender at high-end restaurants oh <laughs> But you're one of the pod fathers of Pittsburgh. You you you're the G Spod, uh, host and such that years was, and years ago. Oh yeah, I was more the the tech guy, the producer, and then the co-host. Just a reminder for people who don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but I've been a guest bartender, but I would love to be a bartender at high end restaurants. That sounds amazing. I haven't bartended since like the 2000 New Year's. Really? You bartended on a New, Year, New Year's yes, Eve? Yes, I was a kind of an assistant bartender Ooh. helping out. It so was like an like, emergency situation? I kind of like like graduated. I was old enough, and I graduated up from my uh, head busboy position to mm-hmm. uh, to be in the bartender for the night. Okay. Yep. At a country club. Small country club, small town. So, I mean, it's not the south side, but you know. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't even like driving down there. But. Yeah. Anyways, this is the Awesome Cast, where uh, we talk about geeky and talk, tech talk from a Pittsburgh point of view. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. Email us, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. Hit up our Facebook page for Awesome Cast Facebook group, where a lot of great conversation. We'll have some stories in here uh, from you guys in a, in a little bit. It's been a little light news this week, so we'll, we'll, we'll see where we go with this. You can also subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. And you can join us here every Tuesday on the live stream at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Facebook page on Facebook Live. And also a uh, shout out to our streaming partners, our friends at RiversEdgePGH.com. If you're here on that uh, live feed on Tuesday nights, uh, you get to listen to a little bit of the River's Edge music. They carry the Awesome Cast Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. as part of their programming blocks. And also our friends on the West Coast, the 405media.com, that carry us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern time. They'll play the latest episode available of the Awesome Cast. Uh, if you want to join us in the studio or if you're interested in advertising on the show, hit up uh, producer Missy over there at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. And if you want to support the show otherwise, you can go to patreon.com slash awesomecast. Thank you to our Coffee Club $5 level peeps, uh, Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore, and at the fan of the show dollar level, Michael Fedor. Uh, again, you can... Help us keep the lights on here in the studio at patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Uh, let's see. John, you haven't been here for a while. We'll, let you, we'll go with you first. You are the special guest. <laughs> I, 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 you're, I get a message that like I'm a special guest. It's like, was, yes, that's the, that's, the, that's the heading. Yes. I was pretty excited to see that my name was special guest. Um, so Google made a quiz to test your knowledge uh, uh, and ability to detect phishing uh, emails, phishing scams. And so they give you eight fake emails 
uh, and you're supposed to de- detect whether it's phishing or legitimate. Mm-hmm. Have you have either of you taken the test? This just came it, out today. I got no. so it's it's pretty I, new. I, I have not. Uh, I got a six out of eight. Uh, I got the two wrong. Uh, one was because it told me in the description it was like the email address doesn't match the URL. And so I thought because they told me in the description they were trying to trick me, so I said legitimate. I don't know why they gave that one away so easily. Uh, and then the last one wanted me to allow some fake company to to have access to my email. And it was legitimate because it wasn't phishing, but I didn't want this fake company to have access to my email, even though it was fake email. So I said I, I, I wasn't about to click on legitimate. So I contest that one. But so I got seven out of eight as far as I'm concerned. It's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. I was just listening to a, a podcast today talking about how like less than one out of 10 people can like, you know, decipher like, uh, you know, integrated ads and things like that. Right. too. So, well, I mean, this you, you know what you're doing here. You're taking this test. So the question true. is like, is Google trying it's, to trick me into making it look like it's phishing, but it's not phishing. I did it's really just a trading tool, though, because yeah. even after you get it right, it's, you <laughs> still have wrong. to. Did you go? <laughs> you, even after you get it right, you still have to click show me, and it's like, why do you do I need you to show me? I just got it right, but it's it's all about just teaching people, and and the reason this was my it's not even that awesome, right? But it, I this morning, like probably an hour before this thing launched, I got an email from a client saying, "Who is this?" Uh, replying to an invoice that came from FreshBooks. This client had emailed me two days ago from mm-hmm. at the same email address, and then I'm getting an email saying, who is this? Like, Because they just didn't trust an invoice because they're so used to phishing schemes. Yeah, because yeah, for FreshBooks, I use the same thing, and it's like a generated invoice, right? It so. generates it as a, as a reply to using your email address, but it comes from FreshBooks. Yeah. So sometimes it gets blocked, or they don't recognize it, or, or I, they don't trust it. Right, right. I've had I've had plenty of clients where might have just dropped into their spam folder, mm-hmm. and then it's like, hey, guys, you're going to pay that someday? And I'm like, what invoice? It's hard. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and, and you don't know if they're lying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> But uh, awesome. I, that's so. It's a little. It's a little tricky. So is this like sh- should I should I get you know mom to try this out? I think if if you have someone in your life who might be a victim or has been a victim, I think in that case it is pretty awesome because mm-hmm. yeah, you should get mom to try it out. Get your parents, get your grandparents, be like, hey, you know, this is a thing. This is a little trainer thing. On the on the other hand, though, like if I were to get my mother in law to try it out, I think that that could cause more problems than it solves because then she'd be suspicious of everything. Mm-hmm. So but use... don't you want to kind of err on the side of caution? Like my, my grandfather gave money to people in India to fix his computer. Oh yeah. Like, so I'd be like, no, I'd rather him be suspicious. Yeah. Than... I guess it, de- it depends. If you depend, if you think the person is, uh, if there's an actual threat versus uh, how much time you're going to spend on the phone, explaining legitimate emails to your mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty excited. My mom is pretty well trained yeah. at this point that she she pretty much she's like this is just I'm not so sure and I'm like ask me. And mm-hmm. she's so good about asking and I I'm, I'm like no. She's like I'm so sorry I feel so I'm like no, you've no idea what's out there cuz she does she doesn't do anything besides like Facebook and Instagram and or not Facebook, Instagram and um email. Beyond that, she's like nothing on the internet. Instagram is pretty advanced, I think. She set up her own account, which I was shocked nice. the one day. She's like, "Look, I have an Instagram account." I'm like, "When did this happen?" <laughs> <laughs> and I think you have to do like that all on the phone still. Yeah. Is, is that right? Yeah. So that was you know. impressive. Yeah, I think I think these are are good training utilities. And I've even seen a couple companies where you can kind of subscribe to their service, and they'll mm-hmm. send send you throughout the year so many times a month. Oh wow! A, a kind of phishing. And if you get it wrong, it takes you to a site and says, hey, you didn't, th- this was meant to be, this was not legitimate. You shouldn't be clicking here. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a cool concept. It, it's interesting because I have an easier time discerning phishing email than I do things that I get in the actual physical mail. I don't know if you, you guys get these too. Like I get, oh, lower this rate, interest rate, or Hey, we need a verification of um, your car insurance. Please click this link and provide it, or you know, please or, log or, into this website and, your and, car- and go here. And I'm like, is this legitimate? Mm-hmm. Is it not? 
What's that, Carmen? Do you get those those letters about your car insurance running out or your, your, I just your, your got warrant, one of your warranty, warranty yeah. expiring? So yeah. I get the, yeah, I get the warranty ones. Yeah. I've also have never had a car in my name like ever and i get oh those. really <laughs> yes <laughs> nice. like ever it's either been in in missy's name or like you know previously in my parents name right just how it's been and it's kind of hilarious i got an email i got a, a mail from AAA with with my first name boyfriend's last name so and then and then like in in the contents of the letter is like we know you I mean, <laughs> no. that sounds less friendly they meant it in a friendly way but they clearly don't they yeah. clearly don't yeah like when, the, the the weird thing is we're we're occasionally getting mail here for for one of my ex girlfriends <laughs> who I shared oh, an wow. apartment with like four mailing addresses ago. Jeez. Like how did they, how did this happen? Wow. I, that just, that like, sounds like the question your wife is asking yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> so she living in the well, basement, we got huh? Mail here and I'm like. What is this? And she's like, I don't know. I throw these away. I'm like, how long have we been getting these? And she's like, since since we moved, oh, since we man. moved here. Wow. And I'm like, that's strange because that's was next girlfriend. <laughs> wow. Um, Katie, what is your awesome thing of the week? Uh, let me go back. What was it? I don't remember. I don't remember. Something about Instagram Netflix. and Netflix. Okay. So I shared a certain show or. Thing we're probably going to talk about later mm-hmm. uh to everybody at least my friends on instagram stories and i didn't realize well they just did this but i took a screenshot and i was like hey you guys need to watch this and post it on my instagram story and now netflix lets you do that from netflix what mm. amazing so it essentially it sends like the the picture of the you know whatever the title card or whatever that thing is for the show and then if it says a netflix original then you can watch on netflix if you click on it in the corner like so if you're like sharing your show and you're like you should watch this and they just click on netflix in the corner and it takes them to netflix thank you great how much do you love this show yeah i'll be like Did you talk about this show so who do you think's making more money off this is this better advertising for netflix or more data aggregation for facebook yeah <laughs> Could go either way. I think, it, yeah, because Nef- Netflix could be pulling a lot of data off this too, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I was suspicious about how, like, how how um, Bandersnatch could, you know, help decipher patterns based on what cereal you'll pick or something like that, right? So, I mean, they're, they're all about data too. Well, and did you see they're trying to they're trying to work out an algorithm for you for to figure out the, the owner of the account and, and the household of the account versus it potentially being shared out so people yeah. can't share Netflix accounts anymore. That's right. So probably do a check. I can't I can't think that I shared mine out to anybody, but I want to double check it. Well, you, <laughs> don't you pay per number of screens? You do. But so, if you yeah. if you're if you're giving it to like a number of people, then and I wonder if they're gonna start saying, Well, that's that's per household, you know. Yeah, but I mean, if it's number of screens, it shouldn't matter if the screen is here or there. That's right. That's right. So yeah, it'll be interesting. So it's it's like you know when you get cable, it says you know if you look at the Xfinity, it's like hey, this is only going to work like on the Wi-Fi in the house, oh, I hate like that. stuff like that. Makes me so mad. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. like, this is ridiculous, and I I just I don't know. I have issues with that. <laughs> That's why I use TiVo. TiVo, Ooh. all about the TiVo. I heard they got some features or something this week, didn't they? You can get, yeah, and you can get, so even if you're an Xfinity customer, if you use the TiVo box, you can stream out of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's go to, who, who didn't I pick yet? Chilla? Oh, Chilla. So what is this? You you, you wanted, so, to, you wanted to, to put something by me here and see uh, see what how I'd react to it. So, so, so I saw, and I can't remember who mentioned this this app. I saw it in on, I think I saw it on Twitter. And I'm like, oh, this looks really interesting. Um, so it's called Ecamm Live, and it's Ecamm with two M's, one word. Um, yeah, so you're going to need to clarify live. the misspellings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in order to find it. But but I thought it was interesting. So it's it's Mac based streaming software. That's hmm. kind of like a production and a little little application that lets you do Facebook Live, YouTube, Periscope, Restream, Twitch, Switchboard, um, 
the the thing that caught my eye about it was it has it has a piece where you can do not just the platform integration to reach out to all of those streaming sites live, but it has an aggregator for the chat, which you can then kind of do as an overlay on top of the stream video, which I thought was pretty darn nifty if it worked. Okay. Um, there's a there's a free trial, otherwise it costs 80 bucks. It works with higher-end equipment like Blackmagic. Um, it works with Canon DSLRs. It even works with uh, new tech NDI video sources. Um, and then it also takes and does a local recording. The other thing that I thought was nice is it has hooks into Skype. Hmm. So you just make the Skype call and eCam. The, the, the claim is you just make a Skype call and eCam, eCam takes care of the rest. Huh. It also has the ability to preload um, video in there. So if you want to pump in pre-recorded type stuff, I just, I just thought it looked like a really cool, really nice piece of software for a mere $80. So when I see it and I'm looking at the video and there's a lot of like, Hey, I want this, uh, this, my skiing video to come up and it, you drop it over the Skype call and it just like plays in, throws a Skype call in the corner, like automatically or automatically. Or you can make the Skype call a picture in picture and do the skiing video full screen. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's interesting. It does look like um, it reminds me of the early days of, you know, when we first started doing this before we went to Wirecast. Um, what was it? Box TV? Is that, yeah. Is that the program that I was using? I picked up off of one of the Mac Boinks. 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 Boinks TV. They still make software and with apps an X. and stuff. Yes. Boinks with an X. Um, but yeah, this looks like a super simplified, super Mac-ish uh, version of like what happens with the Wirecast or, or something too, right? And a lot of these features like a Wirecast will do. But, but so like this starts at, this is only $80. You're limited to Mac. So I like the flexibility of like, hey, it's a lot cheaper for me to get a streaming computer on a PC and then, you know, shut down updates, lock it down and we're good to go. Versus, you know, eh, I, like the, I like the idea of it being a Mac thing. I, I got to try this. Chill. I got to be honest. I do need to try this, but I don't think I want to try this on my 2013 MacBook because it's. I think it would be an interesting test. I think I'm going to melt it. <laughs> this there's a lot of stuff and I'm looking, I'm doing some pretty low end streams on Wirecast and I do not want to push. It. I mean, it is a good i7 um, uh, CPU in there and, 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 you know, until I start really kind of crunching some videos um you know i don't see it going away we're like we're, we're capturing you know full 1080 when we're doing the wrestling shows on there and everything but um but i don't want it to do anything else but capturing right so i don't know if i would rely on this on doing the stream plus the local capture plus let's drag and drop mm -hmm. my skiing video <laughs> so but man this is interesting this is really interesting um it looks like a more accessible version of what happens with a vmix or a uh, or a wirecast or a uh, op even open source broadcaster this is probably a nice update if you're using open source broadcaster which is free which a lot of people use for twitch and things like that right so that's my first site impressions for you uh chilla you should try it you looking at applications for work no i just i just like i said i saw it come across the twitter feed and so here, wait a minute. So a Mac with so the only requirements, Mac 10.11 or newer. So mm -hmm. that's a couple versions back. Okay. I'm still on um, last year's. An internet connection fast enough to stream video, at least one megabit per Check. second upload, four megabits to use the high quality mode. And from a hardware perspective, any Mac manufactured after 2010. Okay, <laughs> you can do it, but can you do everything? Is usually when I see specs like that, right? Yeah, so. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's it's it it, it sparked my interest. Oh. I, maybe I will pull out the old Mac MacBook Air because I have a twenty eleven <laughs> MacBook Air. That's the test right there. And it I, has, but it, would... it does have the i set. My my MacBook does have the dual core i seven. Mm -hmm. So there's four processor threads. Yeah, those last pretty good. Karma, if it does yeah. melt, can you guys video this? Yes. If it does melt. I would love to see it melt. I mean, we have seen a, a BlackBerry get blown up so mm -hmm. around here. So, um, yeah, I should do that every time. The first the first client that wants me to do 4K video and I, I have it on my old MacBook. It's like, let's see what happens, guys. 
Yeah. I think that's a spinoff. I could be. Well, <laughs> awesome, awesome Kablooey. Less, less awesome cast. Less, less awesome cast. <laughs> so, um, Kablooey cast. Kablooey cast. Ooh, I like that. Yes, let's blow shit up. <laughs> Stuff up. Swears. <laughs> Sure. Um, Sw- swears. <laughs> like if you say swears, it cancels it out. Yes. If I say it afterwards, it warns that's, people in the past. That's for the note later. Because yes. um, I'll completely edit that out. Um, I can't think of anything that pops in my head more than Katie's excitement for the fire documentary this week that got oh. me to watch it. Yes. <laughs> so Let's which one? Which fire. one? Uh, we watched the Netflix one. Okay. Although I, by all accounts, I keep hearing that the Hulu one is better. In what way? Like, like more uh, brutal? I don't know. They just said generally it was like it came off like a better documentary. Um, the, there was a, actually I, when I posted there was a big threat. So if you don't know, the Fire Festival was this um, big festival that was happening. I, I didn't know about Fire the app, which was supposed to with the Y, yeah. with a Y. Yeah, went that out. Um, I feel like it's one of my wrestling cl- clients. I'm trying to uh, uh, clarify, <laughs> but so they had an app where it was going to be like a. a you know, broke down the barriers of booking talent. Like, if you want, like, like, uh, you know, a rapper at a birthday party, you know, high end stuff, right? So there's this whole platform they were working on, and on the side of it, they say, "Hey, you know what would be a good promotional tool is if we did a festival." I didn't and know any of this. You didn't know any. I of this. haven't watched the and documentary. It, it blew up to we're going to do it on an island, and it's going to be on Pablo Escobar's private island. And then they got kicked off that island, and they just kept sending up and basic, and it was um this. You know, what they did with with Instagram influencers was really interesting. How they got the buzz up about it, basically sold out in no time. Yeah. Started actually, and then started actually looking at the logistics of doing a concert (laughs) on the island. started. And then it turned into like um, several hundred people, thousand people, maybe. I think thousands, yeah. um, Well, I don't know how many actually showed up. It was like the first wave of them showed up, right? Yeah. I'm guessing like the first plane of them or something or two. I think once the story started coming back, a lot of people probably... Yeah, they told everybody else to go back. Yeah. 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 So, um, so it's that talking about how everybody like in the business and it's like the startup culture and talking about venture funding and the Instagram effect and everything and just to the point where when you're beyond damage control. And I think through the conversation that happened on my Facebook page, when I posted, Hey, go watch this movie. It, it sounds like this one was done by that, that marketing company that mm-hmm. talks a lot about what they were doing with it and why it worked. F and, Jerry. And what's that? F Jerry. F Jerry. I'm not swearing. That's the company. Yeah. F Jerry media. F. That's amazing. It is. It's yeah. Um, that's cool. So it's a little bit of like, they're probably get, trying to get a little bit of their money back here and probably, protect their own reputation so they, with this thing so they made the netflix documentary yeah. mm-hmm. i mean so i'm guessing the hulu documentary is less forgiving um that one is third party and they interviewed the guy um uh mcfarland that um that that was the head guy that did all this and, and is now going to jail for at least two counts of uh, wire fraud oh um interesting like you know you, you're kind of going through this and you're like how do they have all this footage because it was footage of them on the shoot like for the initial like instagram commercial that went out yeah with like you know with jaw roll and him hanging out and doing all this stuff uh you know and, and 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 by the time you get like people there like it's just like cell phone and instagram footage and and stuff that went on twitter and, and stuff not, probably that, at that i point. don't think that's surprising though think no, about not him, at that point. Know, yeah but early on it was it was like then they, he 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 hired another artist video guy to follow him after he was out on bail and he was doing another scam. Yeah, <laughs> another New York City ticket scam. And he uh, had a someone. He had somebody filming it him because he believed scam? in. Yes, he believed in docu- documenting everything that he's doing as an entrepreneur. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So it, it's it's like it's this not, not am- great idea. Amazing effectiveness of Instagram, a cautionary tale to an in, to to influencers. And also kind of like the ugly side of like venture capitalism, because basically he built like all these like, you know, venture capitalists for all this money and kept trying to pull more in to pull off the concert. Right. And then there's all these people on the island that didn't get paid and yeah. other people and the people that did the staging and everything like that. Somebody said that the that, that social media, uh, the marketing company is doing a GoFundMe for the poor lady who had to dig in her savings to pay everybody to feed it, to feed 
the stranded tour, the stranded uh, uh, festival goers. I, I remember seeing pictures at the time of the food. People were posting pictures of <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The cheese on bread sandwiches. And this was sold as a gourmet, you know, live it up, end. live like Pablo Escobar, exclusive on the beach in luxury. Yeah. And here's your FEMA tent, and it la- and it rained overnight, <laughs> <Here's your> and <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, Katie, what were your what were your takeaways from that? I because I think I, I just like went down the same roads you did with that. It, it's, it's amazing because now I'm in another hole because yeah. <laughs> because um, the F Jerry media folks. Um, also started a GoFundMe for the lady at the end. Yeah. Um, that you feel bad. And apparently they're just getting tore into like, you guys, this is all your fault. You go watch the Hulu one. Apparently the Hulu one really throws this company under the bus because they're complaints oh, and seeing the whole thing. And I need to watch this. I need to get a hold of this. Someone help us. <laughs> so we need to see this Hulu version of it. But, um, it's, it's really interesting. Like, I think it was funny cause we talked about the cheese sandwich and one of the lines is, uh, like they had these instagram influencers with bajillion followers you know it's like posting this orange tile and then it was some dude with like 400 followers who posted the cheese sandwich and then that was it it was like downhill that, from that's there. what took them down was that one post I, I almost i feel like if you work in any sort of planning of events you just identified with the the one poor dude, what was his name? Um, in the beginning when he was talking about needing more bathrooms, like the guy that was involved with the logistics and going, you can't do this because you don't have this. And then they spill beer over his plans. It's like, you just identify with that dude so hard because you just be in these, you'll be in these situations where like, you can do X, Y, Z, right? No, you really can't. And I'm like, yeah, you can. And I think at one point they're like, this isn't a, this is a positive work environment. This is a place for solutions not problems. It's like, ah, but we have, but we're not solving the problem. Yeah, I was like, no, the problem still exists. And was, yeah, like you know, between yeah, what did you say? You know, we plan things like pod camp in the past, you know, mm-hmm. around all these wrestling events that happen every weekend, and we see these, like we yeah. see the, the the levels of organization, right? And uh, and it's it's and and that presentation, you know, when things go one way or another online, along with it. So it's 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 really if you're uh, you know curious about social media effects of it um work around it like a lot of us here do um it's worth watching for that at least i can recommend the netflix version of it mm-hmm. and i do plan to sign back up for hulu because I, <laughs> you... I just canceled it you've sold me on the hulu version so I'm... and we haven't watched it i'm watching yeah. that one there's at yeah. least two or three like people that have watched both and said yeah the hulu one's better yeah. you, you so... watch the netflix one and it's literally every few seconds you're like oh man this can't get worse oh this can't get worse. <laughs> oh, this can't. This guy was going to do what? To get, there's a point where the guy offered to do a thing to get water, and you were just like, no, "Oh yeah, yeah, no, dude, no. There is no one." I'm <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It, it was like the destroying, like destroying. It chipped away at like these these um, high end professionals in event planning to like the lowest points. Yeah. Like emotionally and what they would do to get it done. Well, that sounds fun. It's it's worth watching. It's definitely worth watching. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> well, anyways, well, you know what you don't have to do. Um, severe things to get these <laughs> days are our good friends at Slice on Broadway. Um, rough transition. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the street here. All you have to do is walk in, order a pizza. You're good to go. Our friends up here in Beachview, Carnegie, the East End and PNC Park home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. They would support Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time here. And uh, it was good to pop in and see those guys once again this week supporting us here on the show. Go check them out. Slice on Broadway.com. PGH underscore slice on the twitter join their pizza club they have a lot of offers that order online and everything so go check it out and leave their door alone dave podner as well uh open it gently and and wipe your feet there's a lot of salt out there it is pittsburgh Uh, (laughs) so thank you so much slice on broadway for supporting the show so there's first guys i want to talk about a flamethrower Yes. And I believe Doug shared this officially oh, on the so group. Glad. Have you guys seen this? I forget. Who was I talking to about this? This is really day? important tech This news. is really important. Listen, especially, again, we are based in the Northeast. I, I, we have a, a mostly uh, Northeast Pittsburgh area. Um, <laughs> um, um, I, th- I think it was, came up at a wrestling show or something. So there is a gentleman who, a comment from Doug, this may be my awesome thing of the week because, well, Flamethrower, uh, want to keep you in safe. Oh, yes, there is a video. Um, he, this guy apparently wanted to 
he was tired of shoveling or however he was taking care of the snow before. He happened to have a flamethrower. I don't believe this is one of the Elon Musk boring company ones by chance, <laughs> uh, but uh, he used his flamethrower to um, take care of his driveway. Uh, apparently this guy like went to the city, checked on everything. I got an ad plane instead. We'll just move that along. Oh wait, no, this is it. Well, this was this an eerie. This was an eerie. Yeah, this is makes eerie. sense. He checked with the city. He checked with the, everything. He got the clearances. And he's, um, we got the video up there for you guys. Um, he is completely clearing his driveway with a flamethrower. Uh, it's something about like you need to uh, make sure you clear an extra, I, I think it was like an hour of your schedule just to make sure nothing ignites afterwards. Um, so it, it's a great, that was a great visual right there. I actually had, didn't go deep into this video yet. And look, the, the sidewalk is on fire. <laughs> You're done with it. It's amazing. Um, but uh, go check that out. That is, it's a great visual. And it's just kind of like, also, it's kind of, it's kind of scary to see like snow, like on fire charcoal. You know, it's water. <laughs> snow is water. How snow is it on fire? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little disturbing, isn't it? So, so what, it, what it looks like is the flamethrower. The flamethrower is actually spraying a gasoline diesel mix. Oh, okay. So it's lighter than water. So the fire, even when the what, what I was reading there is even after it does melt the snow, the snow then quickly turns into ice. Mm. So maybe so then you just need a flamethrower again. To de ice yes. it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a vicious cycle that just you know at least looks cool. If only they had a device that blew snow. I know, right? <laughs> Some sort. Yeah, of I think you have a billion dollar idea there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I one do. day. Oh, that's a boring company idea right there. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see. Podner has another one here. Um, comment from him. He says this is an awesome competition from Apple. He says you can share your best uh, photos shot on iPhone. Apple's kicking off a twenty nine, kicking off twenty nineteen by celebrating the most stunning photographs captured on iPhone and mm -hmm. the world's most popular camera by inviting iPhone users to submit their best shots as part of this. Um, so that's I mean, there's a lot of I know when I upgraded like to the uh, the uh, eight the eight plus here, like immediately pictures seem to pop a little bit more and uh you know seeing what people do i mean <laughs> how much marketing is done you know for people that aren't going to go out and get a dslr and and this is you probably should at a certain level if you're into advertising or, or taking care of your brand or something like that but generally you get away with a lot of great stuff on an iphone if you're using it properly right katie you're really big into the photography and I, I know you got one of them you got one of them big girl cameras too yes uh <laughs> compared, I got a big girl camera <laughs> comparatively to your your iphone uh iphone 10 right mm -hmm. so i mean you know where, where, where you stand kind of was that the two of them is that that last one was that really shot on an iphone apparently in narnia no, well, it was, <laughs> it's under it's underwater i'm guessing it's using some kind of underwater rig the, under no, the, the before that oh the the forest one yeah yeah um that's that's pretty good my that's problem my is my that's your backyard <laughs> that's, that's I didn't know you had that much real estate in Dormont. <laughs> that's like yeah, half that's, that's, yeah, that's part of the VR room. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, anyways, Katie. What's... <laughs> <laughs> it's a VR room. No, I, I just pulled my camera out the other day for the first time, and I can't even tell you how long my digital, my DSLR, because oh, no. it's just, I know, it's so bad. I need it's to it's a process, too, to deal yeah. with it. So. Yeah, because then it's like, I, I think it's really funny, but I think the step of having to actually take the card out and put it in my computer <laughs> oh. and then open up photo, you know, like, and then this. Okay, it's kind of me with this audio recorder. It's like, what do you mean I got to take a card out uh, of this and cameras? You know, why, you know where, where is my, like, Wi-Fi? And actually, I think a version of my, the smaller Canons that I use on, like, wrestling shoots, um, I think there is one with Wi-Fi that will just send it to my computer. And that is going to be looked into. Sorry, Carmen, what were you saying? It reminds me of that Back to the Future 2, I want to say 2 quote, where he's playing the video game and the kids are like, you mean you got to use your hands? <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we didn't get to that point, did we? We're not yet. Well, we're cl we're really close. Yeah, but people are still playing Red Dead Redemption 2, you know? Yeah. I mean, that, that's the mass thing. I mean, we're still like waving our arms even if we're in VR and stuff. I'm only paying attention to Fortnite right now. So. 
Oh yeah? yeah. How you doing with that? Well, I got a PS4 finally. So. I just I just logged in because I heard about the uh, the globe exploded. Yeah. And there's zombies and snow. There's three kinds of no. There, well, there's several kinds of zombies. Okay. Yeah. That's that. Have, was, have you not been playing? Have you, I have not been playing oh, on a regular I'm, basis. I'm afraid for... to go back because I got addicted for a while and I finally got off the Fortnite train. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm afraid that if I get back on, it's just going to be uh, non-stop. It's a bus, and uh, <laughs> I I took off season six, didn't play at all because the boyfriend was getting annoyed because I was only playing it on my phone. I think you were talking about this issue last time you were probably on. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was probably fresh. And um, then he got me a PS4 for Christmas, and he bought me like a a, a PlayStation a, a Fortnite bundle. At which I didn't really need because I had enough V bucks from playing Fortnite all the time on my phone. <laughs> but um, now he's playing it, I think, more than I am. So that's awesome. So we're good. Yeah, <laughs> it comes back around. So I, I highly recommend Spider Man if you don't have it hmm? for Spider Man for the PS4. Oh, oh yeah, phenomenal. Uh, Band Aids okay. too. The Spider Man Band Aids are awesome. <laughs> are you are you Ooh. seriously wearing a, a Spider Man Band Aid right now? Yeah. That's great. Is it into the Spider Verse? They're amazing. They're extra sticky with with like webbing. They will stay on long after you think you've probably healed. <laughs> you're, just, you're just like, <laughs> who knows? It's sticky and it's cool, and you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna heal yourself, heal in style. I didn't even think of the stickiness factor. You're probably right, Chilla. Wow, that's probably webbing technology. <laughs> There is a version where he, there's a Parker Industries where he's just like sign, he's just licensing his yeah, just licensing all the <laughs> stuff he's done crime fighting, right? <laughs> so, That's smart, man. And then Doctor Doctor Octopus takes over, and it gets really, really interesting and and complicated, but but a really good story overall. Uh, overall, if you want to read Super, Superior Spider Man, and if you are into something like Superior Star- Spider Man, I can't. There's too many S's together for that for me to t- pull that off. Or into the Spider Verse or anything like that. You can check out our friends over at the Comic Book Pit, comicbookpit.com. It's a new year, which means a new page. And our friends at Comic Book Pit, that page happens to have characters and speech bubbles. And some sometime during this, I'm going to end in spe- speech bubbles during this uh, the, during this ad read. Tune into the uh, Comic Book Podcast for your comic book and comic book related news at comicbookpit.com. Uh, we know they're kind of a delayed. You can catch up. They, they have their um, 300th episode up on the podcast. Um, not <laughs> they've come down with the sickness, unfortunately. But it, it you know what? It, it's 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 it works out. While they haven't been able to be in a record because of uh, being ill and the snow, they've had a lot of time to read comics. Because I've been seeing their Instagram about the stuff on there. And there's a lot of great conversation having on their Facebook and their Instagram, too, about um, things that they're reading. You can drop in a line on those, too, and let them know what you've been reading. Myself, I've been reading some Preacher. Because I've uh, watched about at least the first two seasons of it. And uh, they have the books over on Hoopla. Uh, through my library so that's been one i've been kind of digging into a little bit also i forgot i had a ton of comics in my comiXology account that i got for like free a while ago and finally joined it until my amazon so um not that i'll have time to read through all of those anyways it's funny that we're talking about comics because when i do my research for this show i have to a lot another hour (laughs) <laughs> for all of the comics related ads and Marvel MCU articles that I end up reading along the way. Like half of my open tabs are, are Marvel now. They're kind of side by side, right? Well, yeah. how, how do you do your re- how do you do your news reading research like like through for something like this? Well, I mean, I go through all of our links, you know, mm-hmm. and then go to like Engadget or Vice or, or And just see what's up. Just see what's up, yeah. Nice. Um, let's get into, we got a few stories here for you. I'm glad you guys found some stuff because I, I, I just, my tech news, uh, the newsletters have been just so light this week. Uh, it, it's like everybody took a nap after uh, CES last week. So, um, Katie list. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I just read that line. <laughs> Katie, tell us what you got here at the dock. <laughs> Oh, you sure? Yeah. Okay. Hey, everyone. Uh, so, first time back this year. And I have the Pornhub 2018 year in review. Yay! Yay! And, oh, my gosh. This link is phenomenal, actually, to deep dive into the data on just... And it's, and it's safe. It's yeah, safe. Yeah, it's safe. It's all safe. I hope so, because this video is going to the street right now in the public. So. Hey, friends. Look at this. 
Um, but yeah, it goes everywhere from population to what people are watching to um, how like every minute there's 207,000 videos viewed on Pornhub, which is insane. Um, they have the top search to find, you know, defined searches in 2018, Stormy Daniels, Fortnite, 4K, Romantic, uh, Trans, Outdoor, Tattoos, Tinder, Bowsette. Wait, wait. There's, mm-hmm. there's Fortnite porn? There is Fortnite porn. It's huge, apparently. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, on uh, hey. Pornhub. Yeah. There's even, there's even Fortnite uh, VR porn. It's kind of like if there is, there's the VR is kind of also... <laughs> There, there is going to be a VR version of it, likely. Oh, yeah. I don't want to get into things too, too much because you should really enjoy this at home by yourself. Uh, <laughs> but it does. Uh, it goes into male and female genders, um, what they were searching for, uh, most viewed by category. And I'm scrolling down, scrolling down. So much. There's just so much ridiculous data. The average age is 35 and a half. Uh, popular searches by age group, like the 18 and 24 year olds, are looking at Fortnite. <laughs> Porn up. And then, and like you can see where people are looking at it. Obviously, mobile seems to be the go to place. A lot of people on um, Internet Explorer. Kim Kardashian is still A popular. lot of people on Internet. I think that's the best one. <laughs> if you are wondering, traffic by game console 54% went there by PlayStation, 33% went to Pornhub by you dirty, Xbox. You dirty, dirty PlayStation users. Wait, there's more. Oh. Um, PlayStation Vita, whatever. Nintendo 3DS and Nintendo Wii U oh, no. can get to Pornhub, just in case you were wondering. But why? <laughs> Don't you have a computer? Nope. Hey, man. If, if, wait, wait, 3DS, that seems... <laughs> <laughs> well, it does have a touchscreen. So I, I find it interesting that there's an, also an average time spent per visit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like thir- t- Most of it's, I think, the U.S. was like 10 minutes. That was the average. Here's more fun. Top mm-hmm. top categories by region. Yeah, you might some of these you might want to just skip some of the. You might not want to read those out loud. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of skipped. I'm, no, I'm doing, no, yeah, just leaving the visual. I'm out doing there. the PG version. Um, so popular movie, TV, and character searches for 2018. Um, number one was Harley Quinn. Number two is Elastic Girl, which is up 370 percent from last Jeez. year. <laughs> uh, the Incredibles as a whole, Star Wars, Family Guy. Avengers, Game of Thrones, Wonder Woman, Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so you can see all the different characters that people were looking for. So basically everything you can think of is properly represented there. Well, it's pretty good. Yeah. All, and you have all your video game characters. Um, here's something else really fun if you keep scrolling down. They have um, when like there was a disruption like as far as a drop um, when there was certain TV and live broadcasts like the Golden Globes, they saw a drop in 4% in the United States. Uh, a drop in the American Music Awards of 6%, which is wild. There was a drop in world iOS traffic of 11% on the Apple iPhone live event. <laughs> <laughs> Royal Wedding, 10% down. Westworld season two what? premiere, like, 3%. Didn't, didn't like when, when there was that fake um, nuclear attack in Hawaii or whatever, wasn't there like a, a huge spike? Yes. I don't know, it's <laughs> it's got to be in here somewhere. But yeah, it's in. I mean, just it, it's fascinating to read all this different data, to, and they break it down by country, so you can look if you're like, oh, I wonder what they're doing in the Netherlands. Well, here's what they're doing in the Netherlands. <laughs> but it's great I mean, when you. I mean, this is pages of data that it they, is like yeah. giving out. It's it's super interesting because like, would you would you ever think that Google would give this kind of stats on their <laughs> their general search trends? Probably is- not. It's it just I'm still scrolling. This doesn't end. Yeah. I'm, I'm on. It goes on forever. It goes into individual countries. I'm, um, I'm bookmarking that. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Whoosh! I finally got to the, about a year later. I got to the comments. This is amazing. Oh wow. yeah, and if you. It's really interesting. So Pornhub, Pornhub's so interesting. But you can look in individual, like the look in the Apple special event. You can see what was searched that day. Um, I'm showing John Carmen the top Fortnite searches. <laughs> oh, there you for go. For season six. Um, I won't read those. Wait, 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 uh, wait, wait. Specifically for se- season six? Correct. For September 2018. So like when and it was like a huge spike on September 30th was up 112% from what the 10th. Like one of those seasons, there's just a lot of rabbit outfits. Red Re- Dead Redemption insights, um, Halloween insights. So yeah. Wow. Why is there a separate metric just for Detroit, Michigan? <laughs> <laughs> Something to do. Sure. Because Detroit's just really 
in there. Look at the... Uh, Chilla, you're going to have to click on the Apple special event one because it's a uh, percent change in traffic during the event compared to an average day. And they literally literally go from the announcement at 1245 up until by minute till 3 p.m. <laughs> the change. But, like and, and what they're talking about in the <laughs> Potter says Potter says you may say that it's uh, an orgy of data. Yes, I like that. Well, I mean, and we, I mean, I've commented before. You know, military fast food and porn lead <laughs> the, te- the technology industry. <laughs> yep. I mean, the metrics here are outstanding. I mean, think of the detail and information that they can extrapolate from this this type of keeping this type of metric based data. And you think about it: if if there's that many people per second on their site, the amount of just raw storage and compute power they need to run these types of metrics on a on a minute by minute, second by second basis, and then correlating them with other events. I mean, this is, it's pretty telling and intense of, of where we could go from, from a metric-based world and statistics analysis. This is like... Am I the only one that geeks out about that kind of I'm thing? I'm sorry, no, I, was, no. I was looking at something online. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the hub? I was creating some stats. <laughs> <laughs> but it's because Pornhub.com uh, slash insights mm-hmm. is all of their insights, like from the government shutdown to the Grinch to, to midterm election. I mean, wait, wait, the Grinch? Yes. How the Grinch stole Christmas um, st- uh, stole searches. So there you go. You essentially click on that and you're like, oh, I'm curious about this. And yeah, you can see when people were searching for um, the Grinch or Santa. This is uh, this <laughs> This is so exciting. <laughs> this is a little bit to the um, you know conversation that happened with Netflix about how our competition is Fortnite because of course Fortnite again, right? Um, it's not you know it, this is that attention span, right? Yeah. Like I, I, your 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 competition isn't like Netflix versus HBO or Pornhub versus other porn. It's really just your time and everything that you do. You know this podcast takes away from a Pornhub search. Or gives them some after you're done with this. I don't know. Um, you know, but it, it is that kind of time thing. So, wow. Once again. I, I, Overall, yeah. this is great news for lesbians. They they were super popular with everyone super last year. Super popular. Yeah. Women, men. Yeah. Uh, Finland loves lesbians. Everyone loves lesbians. It's a big deal, man. Show title. <laughs> 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 um let's stay on the Fortnite thread in a different way hopefully <laughs> i don't know i don't know where this is going to go I feel entirely like we'd be getting back to let's back to it uh uh carmen you you shared a a, a fun Fortnite yes uh situation here. A, a Fortnite video i didn't know apparently there are lots of Fortnite videos but this one <laughs> this one was, I, don't, I don't even know okay this one was done in Fortnite, but uh using the audio from the avengers 4 trailer teaser trailer so I don't know. If, do you want to play the whole? Yeah, thing it's or? playing. It's playing now. You'll okay. see it on delay. So it, we so we we got it in the background here. I don't want to get any audio takedowns or anything like that. But uh, right. yeah, they just pretty much framed everything to. Um, I think this is the Infinity War. Yeah, one that's playing now. Um, the the, uh, the 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 Avengers Endgame one uh, is him talking to the pinata head. Yeah, <laughs> to begin with, instead of Iron Man, for instance. The pinata is the computer. Oh, so they've done they've done this before. What? This is the this is the Infinity War. Trial. I didn't see no, this. One. This one is the End Game, but they also have the Infinity. Oh yeah, you probably see Infinity War now. I'm kind of yeah. Going I'm, back on, and forth. I'm on delay. Sorry. I mean, they're all the Fortnite characters and everything, but they've just kind of you know set up the how, scenes. I love how he's standing there like the Scarecrow. That's yeah. my favorite part. It's uh, it's pretty good. And, and this is I, I didn't know. Is there? Is there like a screen recording kind of like it's like I know like Team Fortress and things like that. Like there was a a you can make movies with this. Like there, there were tools to do it, right? Yeah, I don't know how how much he had to create that himself. Or if they're trying to go do these scenes and they just kind of record them locally in well, the middle of matches. <laughs> you can go in, what is it? There's two modes where you're not fighting, right? There's creative 
Oh, okay. Right, and there's because that's the that's like the twenty dollar. You got to pay for that version, right? Do you? Yeah, I think, I think yeah for the for the one where it's just like build your fortress build, type mode, build your own island. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's like a a twenty dollar. Well, it makes sense if if you're saving the island and going back to it, like like you're building like civilization. Yeah, a little more infrastructure. Uh, I guess I, I guess more like Minecraft at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and, and that's not getting paid for with dance moves. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so some fun and creative stuff with Fortnite, and and like I mentioned, like they, they've changed things up, and uh, now it's snow covered. I like that it's um well, I mean, just in time for winter, so that's kind of cool. I, I popped in for a couple minutes. Basically, I've been logging in every so every couple weeks mm, to so. download the updates, so I don't have a <laughs> three gigabyte download to my phone. <laughs> that I have to in order to when I want to play the thing. That's planning so, ahead. I mean, just in case you want to pop in and actually play. Yeah, and I'm like, oh well, this will take a half hour. Okay, um, it's my. I mean, it's my issue with video games in general. I don't play any of them enough to stay up on all the updates, and then when I want to play, I have to sit and wait for the updates. So there's there's creative, and you're saying that's the one you have to pay for, but there's there's also playground. I don't I don't know which one it is. One of them the one of them you have like the the non battle royale one of the non battle royales is like 20 bucks okay mm-hmm. well I, so i guess they probably just went into one of them and went as a as a squad or however many and and acted everything else so you don't have to worry about someone shooting you while you're filming which i'm sure you've had to deal with sorry i have i mean <laughs> i've had yeah you know make sure you don't get hit by a car or a yeah. wrestler yeah no we've been there I, I got i got kicked by a wrestler last week I mean, this it, is a lot safer it is you safer should, you For, so you're telling me fortnite is safer as a videographer yeah than basically everything that i do you should film everything in fortnite there you, you go just, yes. yeah you should just recreate all the matches in fortnite <laughs> wait for my new proposal to my clients coming up this next week Jeez, um, Katie, you haven't dug into the Fortnite. Nope, yeah, have you? Like Too busy at all? In Hub. For do- <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're experiencing the other side of Fortnite. Yes. I see. <laughs> I, I, so it's not like you're not experiencing. It's a different kind. At this point, if she were to see the real Fortnite, she'd be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> this is all this is. This is sad. <laughs> How boring! You guys spend all your time here. Why? <laughs> They're just killing each other. <laughs> oh, but not in as creative ways. <laughs> There's not as much stabbing in this version. Boring. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, Chilla, tell me about tell me about the Raspberry Pi competition. So there's a um, and if I start to break up, let me know because I'm downloading a three gig Fortnite update. <laughs> 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 um, so I, I saw there, and let me open up the document real quick. There's a there's a competitor to the Raspberry Pi. It's the Orange Pi Three. What caught, what sparked my interest about this competitor is not just the fact that it's the the same price. It hits that thirty five dollar price point. Not only is it a little more powerful with the quad core CPU, four USB ports, um, updated USB, uh, AC Wi Fi. Some of the things you're seeing in the new what is it, the Raspberry Pi three B plus, um, but they're giving some alternate operating systems for it, including Android. Um, so if you were ever thinking about making like an Android-based media center, which you could potentially have access to Google Play, depending on how this all works out, um, I thought it was a pretty cool thing to give a whirl. I did not purchase one yet, but I'm definitely thinking about it because they actually haven't posted the Android OS upload for it. Um, the one thing that I did see was that it does not use the exact same board layout as the Raspberry Pi. So you have to get, you're not going to be able to use just one of those out of the box cases that fit most of the Raspberry Pi devices, but I thought it was worth, worth a look, um, especially if it supports Android. So I'm keeping an eye on this, waiting for them to post that, and then I'm probably going to pick one of these up. And I'm hoping it puts Raspberry Pi in a position that they're going to support Android as well. So is that, or does this become a reliable, like maybe Android desktop as well, or is it just the kind of the like, media center? That's it? I think that's up for question, right? Okay, I, I'd be interested in seeing. Now, don't forget is 
the most of those desktops are Chrome based. Mm -hmm. So they run Chromium, not Android. Um, but it's funny because, and and as we talked through the Slack, I think I think you probably saw the the questions from Durda or, uh, earlier. I see more and more people that are running Chrome, relying on the ability to run an Android app on top of Chrome OS. Mm -hmm. So why not just cut to the chase and run it? Um, and there are the there are devices I've seen like at Best Buy they've had like you know not tablets but you know there were there were large screen maybe large screen tablets i guess there were meant to be a computer monitor samsung had a, thing samsung had a large screen form factor device but then there's also the android tv right type thing that's not chrome based it's android based the was it the nvidia shield mm -hmm. is a, is a big manufacturer of those devices and i'm trying to think there's at least one other one that i saw um, but what I think is nice is it gives you the entire Android library. So we'll see, we'll see how this works. And it, it has some pretty powerful specs and can even do 4K. So with geek, gigabit Ethernet, um, Bluetooth 5. So that was a pretty interesting device at that same, hitting that same price point. Go check it out. It's the Orange Pi and uh, another DIYer. Hey guys, I want to give a shout out to our friend, uh, our friend, ah, uh, no, the doc didn't come up. Uh, and, <laughs> um, can our, we just pick a friend? Yeah, yeah, pick a friend, pick yes. a friend. Tell me about your friend. No, our friend Alex Cars, who uh, has been supporting the show for a while here, he does some cool work, has done some really cool work with us in the past here, including DVDs. I've seen t shirts he's done, um, with uh, for, for pro wrestling and for wrestlers actually as well. Um, if you are trying to figure out that puzzle of media and everything, go check out alexcars.media. That's K-A-H-R-S dot media. And uh, he does everything uh, from branding to print and digital projects. Alex can, do, Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Check them out in alexcars.media. Uh, I saw one of the, uh, one of the wrestlers, Kikio, who he did a t-shirt for that's over on pro wrestling tees, uh, dot com. Um, um, putting them over on the, the Twitter the other day. Uh, so go check them out. Some good stuff from there. Uh, I want to give some shout outs. Um, first of all, if you go over to the thrifty podcast, Facebook, um, they are having an event, several podcasts, including, um, um, Sykes podcast, uh, somebody I know from previous days of doing music um and a couple other podcasts are doing an event um uh, information you gotta message them for the <laughs> you gotta message them for the address which is interesting i think i'm gonna drop by and see what these guys are doing um but yeah it's like a uh, four podcasts are recording together and are going to do some festivities around it and uh thrifty is always a good time when they're here in the sorgatron media studios so uh, i think i might swing in and check that go over to the thrifty podcast for the latest on that also i want to give a shout to our friends uh, we actually work with these guys on another project around pro wrestling, but go check out the Culture Pop podcast. Um, some friends over there it is a family that gets geeky together, and they're talking about everything. Like this week, they're talking about uh, Hamilton, Fallout, Red Dead Redemption, Bird Box, Future Man. Um, you know, kind of more pop culture uh, geeky things that they get into. And uh, it's kind of cool to see that. They, I was watching some of their, when they first started doing some stuff, they were doing some Facebook Lives. Uh, I also follow their Facebook, so when they do record, I think they do that on there. And um, go check those out. And coming up, guys, Bobby Cherry's coming back on the show. Whoa. On the 5th of February. Boo. Boo. Oh. <laughs> I thought we banned him. Did we? What did he do? I guess it was a temporary ban. <laughs> He's been doing digital media over at WTAE, so I'm kind of I want to kind of pick his brain on what's going on over there. See what uh, see what see what the big old uh, TV stations are doing for digital media these days. I thought you were call, gonna call him the big old cherry. The big old. <laughs> see what the big old cherry's up to. <laughs> see what the big old cherry's up to. Come on down. Tell us about your. I mean, we like to check in with our our old media friends there and all of our newspaper friends and and. I don't know. Is there anything else I'm missing there? Um, but uh, shout out to our meteor meteorologist friends. Yes, who deserve Aww. deserve an apology this week. <laughs> Do we have meteorologist friends? We like Scott. Yeah, that's true. Scott's cool. We're sorry. <laughs> sorry, Scott. <laughs> you get some. There's some canceled events. They're probably not happy right now. 
that we were involved in. Anyways, John Carmen, where is there anything uh, you want to throw out there that uh, people can check out? Um, no. No? <laughs> no. No, go to my Twitter as usual. There's a, a few um, snarky tweets about Scott Harbaugh, followed by a few apologies. Uh, and there'll be more snarky <laughs> tweets about Scott and the weather in the future. And 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 a possible apologies. Possibly followed by apologies and some Fortnite updates. Like, okay, Fortnite. good, good. You should live tweet your Fortnite experiences. Depending on which Fortnite yeah. works. Oh uh, yeah, I okay. Some of them, yes. yes. Depends on where you want to go with that account. Katie Dutters, what's going on in your world? I'm about to drop a link to uh, you can win a KFC gravy scented candle. <laughs> <laughs> what? Win a gravy scented candle. <laughs> Where's that at? Is that it's in, the... in the UK? But uh, I think anybody can win. Aren't they the ones that got like the the chicken keyboard or something or uh, over there? Or? Yeah, they, well, they um so KF, KFC had done a thing where you could buy the 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 wood that you burn in your fireplaces that smells good. I think it's a, there's a fancy word for it, but I can't think of what it is. But um, now that was the thing you could buy, and that and now they're playing around with gravy scented candles. <laughs> you know, someone wants one. Whatever there is in the United States, if you go to England, it gets weirder, and KFC is no exception. I love it. Yeah, but why gravy? That's not what I think of when I think of KFC. I mean, no, you can do, do the gravy. No, I don't have mashed gravy. Potatoes, their mashed potatoes and gravy are the bomb. I think See, Boston Market's mashed potatoes are far superior. Yeah, kind of a the mashed level. potatoes or the gravy. You know, I haven't really thought about the gravy specifically. What? Welcome to Gravy Cast. Ooh, um, Kaboom Cast and Gravy Cast. There you go. Uh, anything? Anything you're into that you want to plug? I'm gonna blow shit up and eat gravy. Another swears. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how many can sneak in this Kato show. is on the Twitter, too. <laughs> and I'm all out of gravy. Yeah. See updates on that. <laughs> yeah. Stuff and things. At Chilla on the Twitters. Chillatech.net. John's Chill on the Facebooks. Did I see a couple of weeks ago people were asking you for advice on something? Like TV or something? What was that? What was, was that Was that a fever dream? I'm trying to think what was... what. I don't know. Maybe it was over Christmas. Maybe it was somebody's grandma they were helping out. Yeah. Hey, I want to shout out, um, because I, I meant to read this before, but J- Dave Ponder says on a tiny shutter a couple of months ago, they did interview the past winner of the, that Apple photo competition, uh, iPhone photo competition. So go uh, check out their archives on the tiny shutter podcast uh, for when they talked to her. Uh, they talked to them about the, oh, it was a her and her experience with the competition. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, producer Missy, for putting up with this. And our new proposals for podcasts. Thanks, Katie. Uh, <laughs> so, so and so much more. Thank you, chat room. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.